The University of Maryland has already begun utilizing solar energy as a source of its power. Projects include the solar hot water panels installed at Ellicott Dining Hall, the photovoltaic panels at Cole, and the massive solar array at the Severn Building. The amount of power you can harvest from the sun is directly proportional to the area exposed to solar radiation. Take the Kim Building for example. From its footprint, we can estimate its area to be 6,436 meters squared. If we install photovoltaic cells on the roof, uh, maybe a little bit more. If 75% of the roof is covered with photovoltaic cells, we'd have an area of 4,827 meters squared. So if we assume that the efficiency of PV cells is 12%, 12? That's projected efficiency for 2012. Use 10% to be safe. So if we assume that there are about 4.5 useful hours of sunlight a day, then we can calculate the weekly energy production to be 20,694 kilowatt hours per week. If we estimate the average engineering building demands at 60 kilowatt hour per week, that's one third of its energy. At 12 cents per kilowatt hour, that's $2,483. That's 8.4 tons of coal. That's 331 burritos. At 1100 calories per burrito, that's 0.4232 kilowatt hours burrito energy per week and $5,867 per kilowatt hour. Stop. On the University of Maryland sustainability website, they allege that solar panels have a payback period of 10 to 20 years. If we take the cost of insulation at $1 per watt and calculate 136 watts per meter squared to 10% PV efficiency, then the total cost to install would be $656,472. Dividing this number by the yearly savings, the payback period is estimated to be 5 years. Using a 50% margin of error for maintenance, installation, and unforeseen costs, the payback period can be estimated at 7 to 8 years. Finally, since the Chem Engineering Building itself is a practical and educational demonstration of engineering at work, installing photovoltaic panels here presents an opportunity to showcase the effectiveness of solar energy to the engineers of tomorrow.